We are unmanned aerial vehicles at Berkeley. This year, we're sending an aircraft to the SUAS competition for the first time in UC Berkeley's history. Our growing team has brought an engineering experience, academic background, and passion into building our aircraft, one that autonomously follows waypoints and precisely delivers payloads at remote areas. We are thrilled to showcase the immense amount of technical design and flight testing that our aircraft has undergone. This year, our competition team will be Franklin Ho, team leader, John Lomax, ground control station operator, Matthew Song, safety pilot, Kyle Hornsby, payload engineer, and Nicole Lee, business and media. Our team has designed our aircraft's technical specs to meet and exceed the mission requirements published last November. Based on the timeline subsection requirements, we determined that our aircraft should fly autonomously for 30 minutes at around 36 miles per hour, while powered by enough battery capacity for 10 miles of flight. We have chosen powertrain components and software packages related to autonomous path planners to ensure our aircraft completes the mission with room to spare. To ensure full marks for the airdrop requirements, we calculated that a parachute deployed payload system was the only way to stay within the mission timeline requirements, while ensuring our payload could drop targets within the 20 feet of the specified targets. Our detection techniques and classification algorithms were also chosen to ensure robust performance for airdrops in unfamiliar environments. To maintain operational excellence during unexpected losses in signal, we implemented operator-triggered and automatic return-to-home and return-to-land fail-safe modes. Although we hoped to conduct the mission with only two operators, we decided a four-operator team. The team explored several form factors to determine how to carry water bottles and deliver them precisely and efficiently. We first considered a fixed-wing aircraft to take advantage of passive lift generation. However, we anticipated significant difficulties in developing software to control ailerons. We eventually realized that a multirotor would be able to take off without needing a runway, and wouldn't require complex software to control it during flight. So that is the form factor we ultimately chose. Using simple aerodynamic calculations and qualitative aspects of different multirotors, we evaluated the portability, cost, total weight, thrust, motor efficiency, and safety of the main multirotor types. This decision matrix showed that a hexacopter would perform the best holistically, so that is the form factor we ultimately chose. Our multicopter, weighing 24.8 kilograms, is equipped with a high-resolution camera to help drop three water bottle-sized payloads at autonomously identified locations. Since several components of our drone are removable to increase portability, operators first secure the removable arms to the mounts on the main airframe. After connecting the ESCs and power to the motors, we clip in batteries and secure the top plate with avionics. The safety pilot then activates the Boxer ELRS controller and powers on the aircraft. The ground station operator then plugs in all radio telemetry peripherals and initializes the RTK to maximize GPS precision. Since all the image classification algorithms and autonomous navigation code base are preloaded on our onboard computer, our drone is now ready to fly for efficient power consumption compared to other systems. Our power distribution system is capable of handling over 50 kilowatts of power and generating 77 kilograms of thrust at full throttle. With a net lifting capacity of 50 kilograms, our drone is ready to deliver a wide range of payloads. After careful consideration, our team selected the Arjucam IMX-477 Imager as our camera because of its 12 megapixel image quality, low cost, and ability to mount different types of lenses. We chose a 16mm focal length lens that has a field of view of 45 degrees horizontal and 31 degrees vertical. At a height of 80 feet, this camera can cover 7,691 square feet of area, yielding a resolution of 1,560 pixels per square foot and approximately 1,013 pixels per 8.5 by 11 inch target. It is mounted on a custom-made 3D printed gimbal that is controlled by the Storm32 BGC board running open source firmware. This provides a stable view of targets and allows us to reposition the camera as needed. The gimbal is wired to the NVIDIA Xavier NX onboard computer via UART so that the gimbal orientation can be rapidly adjusted to provide the best images to the OLDC algorithms running on the Xavier NX. We employ a two-stage processing pipeline to detect and classify target objects. First, 
we capture live images with the camera pointed directly downward. These images are then processed using our custom YOLO V5 model to identify objects of interest, both emergent and static, split them into a list of targets, and enhance them for our second stage. After, we use a second YOLO V5 model and our own color masking algorithm to classify the target's character, shape, and two colors. The onboard computer checks its bottle queue, which are predefined targets we upload during setup, to see if there's a bottle matching the classified target. If one matches, a drop is performed after the exact drop location is determined by our geo-referencing algorithm. From 400 simulated images and 50 real-life images of targets from our flights at 80 feet, we successfully classified 386 of the simulated images and 40 of the real-life images. We've also done 54 geo-referencing tests with a confidence level of 90% for calculating GPS coordinates within the 20-foot drop zone. For our payload mechanism, we use three thermo-activated chambers that are attached to a housing bracket, which is detachable from the drone. This removable approach allows easy access to reload our chambers without affecting recharging or drone maintenance. To load, each payload bottle has an attached parachute and clip, which is positioned in each chamber. They are then affixed to a rack and pinion release system. Once loaded, the payload housing can then be slid into place underneath the drone and clipped securely. When in the air, once our drone identifies a target, it will autonomously align itself for deployment. Once aligned, the designated payload will be released from the chamber and deploy its parachute to safely deliver itself towards the target. Once the release has been confirmed, we could safely move onto the next target without having to wait for it to land. This diagram provides a high-level overview of the main systems on our drone and ground station and how they communicate with each other. Our aircraft can be flown manually by the safety pilot using a 2.4 GHz ELRS RC transmitter. This signal is received on the drone by the RadioMaster RP-4. This enables manual takeoff and landing, as well as manual flight override with an estimated range of 10 kilometers. To avoid interference, our RC transmitter uses frequency hopping while the receiver uses true antenna diversity to prioritize the antenna with the strongest connection. Telemetry, as well as commands and autonomous controls, are streamed between our aircraft and the ground station using RFD-900X long-range modems with the Mavlink protocol. These radios will stream all of our flight data, including heading, location, status, and both manual and autonomous commands from the ground station. These will be encrypted using an AES-128 encryption provided in RFD's firmware. These radios operate at a frequency of 915 kHz and have an expected range of 40 kilometers. They operate at 1 watt transmission power at plus 30 dBm. This point-to-point -point network has a throughput of up to 500 kilobits per second. This table summarizes the specifications we have discussed so far. Our communications have been tested up to 2,000 feet. The telemetry radios maintained an RSSI of over 150 out of 240 and a link quality of 40 out of 100 at this maximum range. The RC radio stayed above an RSSI of 180 out of 240 and a link quality of 80 out of 100. During our design process, an important aspect we considered was redundancy, since it is paramount for ensuring safety while the drone is in operation. With a hexacopter design, having six rotors significantly minimizes the risk of catastrophic failure in the event that one of the rotors malfunctions so we can safely maneuver the drones to the ground with just five rotors. On top of this, having six rotors ensures that we have superior stability in the air since we can account for external disturbances such as wind. Our hexacopter features a central battery bay design to reduce the moment of inertia with the central battery mass, which in turn allows more efficient power usage and agility. The frame is made up of four carbon fiber plates fixed together with aluminum standoffs. The simple design allows for greater versatility for mounting and ease in assembly, making the drone more conducive for iterative designs. The material also allows for weight reductions. In terms of other significant hardware, our legs are designed to be lightweight while also resisting loading in multiple directions. The tilt also stabilizes the drone on landing. Our motor mounts were designed to reduce weight and simplify electrical connections. To ensure the safe operation of our drone, we complemented physical test flights with simulations. We conducted drop tests with Ancestors LS Dyna and adjusted standoff locations to our points of maximum deformation. We use a set of four 30 amp hour lithium ion batteries 
which provide us with a capacity of 60 amp hours at 50 volts to power our 8014 100 kV motors. These are controlled by six 60 amp ESCs. All the power and signal cables to our motors are routed through the carbon fiber arms to protect them from damage and to improve the airflow over the arms. All power distribution is concentrated in a custom-made vibration isolated box. This provides ease of access for maintenance, a simplified power on scheme, and modularity for future upgrades. This season, our team was able to design and fabricate our first custom printed circuit boards. These included a system to measure the individual cell voltage of all four batteries and stream the data to our onboard computer, an antenna tracker controller board, and a companion board to convert pulse width modulation signals to stepper motor drive signals. To summarize, here is a table with our aircraft specifications. Our aircraft runs ArduPilot, an open source flight control software on a CubePilot Orange Autopilot system. It is built on a 32-bit STM32 microcontroller alongside a second backup MCU. This autopilot has triple IMU redundancy, vibration dampening, and temperature regulation for all internal components to enable a stable autonomous flight. Its 14 PWM outputs allow for simultaneous control of our six main motors, as well as payload servos and gimbal motors. This autopilot can autonomously execute a preloaded set of waypoints while processing sensor data from various peripherals, such as a compass, GPS, 360 LiDAR, rangefinder, and current and voltage sensors. To maximize stability and power usage during autonomous flight, our aircraft has run ArduPilot's AutoTune to create a controller profile catered to our vehicle's unique flight characteristics. To ensure the utmost accuracy in our flight paths, our ground station suite includes an RTK base, which allows our drone to achieve centimeter level positional accuracy. To operate our drone, our team uses a customized build of Mission Planner on the ground station. For autonomous flights, we take any text file of GPS waypoints and geofence coordinates and create a mission plan that is uploaded from Mission Planner to the Cube Pilot Orange. We have flown over 150 minutes spread over 25 flights on our competition vehicle. In 11 of those flights, we ran purely autonomous missions with an average of two minutes of flight time in manual mode. We attempted over 190 waypoints during these autonomous flights with an average hit rate of 98% and an accuracy of two meters. To prevent our drone from hitting unwanted static areas, we use the Bendy Ruler Path Planner. This is a shortest path algorithm that will update the drone's path to avoid any defined obstacles while calculating the shortest possible path toward a waypoint. To avoid mid-air collisions with other drones and moving objects up to 12 meters away, we use the 360 RP LiDAR S2L. The S2L is directly connected to our autopilot, which is programmed such that the drone will stay at least 4 meters away from other drones and moving objects detected. If an object is detected, waypoints will be recalculated by the Cube Pilot Orange using Bendy Ruler to avoid the object. Finally, a 1D LiDAR, the Benawake TF Luna, mounted on top of the drone, will detect if any obstacles are within 3 meters above us. Rerouting based on these objects will also be performed by the Cube Orange using Bendy Ruler. A second 1D LiDAR is also mounted on the bottom of the drone to enable precise autonomous landing. We've completed tests of the 360 LiDAR and upward-facing LiDAR by having a DJI camera drone fly next to our aircraft. The DJI drone was detected in 95% of our tests, and our aircraft successfully rerouted in 85% of those tests. For this moving object, the full collision avoidance, defined as the DJI pilot not needing to take evasive action, was achieved in 75% of tests. For static objects, we set up cylindrical geofences with random radii and programmed autonomous paths through the geofenced objects. Full collision avoidance was achieved in 95% of tests. The downward facing 1D LiDAR successfully enabled pinpoint accuracy during autonomous landings in eight of our 10 autonomous flights. Keeping our teams safe while working has motivated us to mitigate safety risks as much as possible. By providing training and closely supervising new members, we ensure that any risky practices are mitigated before they have a chance of putting a member at danger. For airframe members, relevant PPE is mandatory during component manufacturing, and a first aid kit is available in the unlikely event of injury. We also clearly identify dangerous components to new electrical team members. All live contacts are electrically taped and placed inside an insulated box to minimize personnel contact. By following a pre-flight checklist developed from prior experience, 
we ensure that all critical components and wires are correctly assembled, and all software packages are loaded. Furthermore, software errors can cause radio signal losses during flight. Our safety pilot is always ready to take manual control, in addition to a return to home failsafe in case our radio controller cannot connect. All these successful test flights caps off an incredible experience of designing an extremely capable aircraft. We are so excited to showcase our UAV, built from the ground up at SUAS. Just now, we've covered our unique hardware, including fully custom composite aero structures, a robust and reliable powertrain for long endurance flights, and a novel payload release system. We've tightly integrated hardware with software, where autonomous navigation, obstacle avoidance, and object classification algorithms gather data from our vision system and run on a powerful onboard computer to ensure safe and accurate payload delivery. Through extensive testing, we are confident our aircraft has gone above and beyond the expectations set by the SUAS competition rules. After two years of hard work, we are ready to show you what we are made of. Thank you for watching and see you in Maryland.